Goth Girl and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be showing you guys how I actually make my thumbnails. This video has been getting a lot of requests, so here I am. So before we get started, please make sure that you smack that subscribe button and let's get right into it. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to be making a thumbnail for my How to Survive High School video. I just filmed that like an hour ago, so this is what we're doing. Okay, so I make my thumbnails using Keynote, so the first thing that we are going to do is just open up a new document. So once you have clipped the new document, I usually just like to pick the white plain presentation. You want to delete all these text boxes because we currently do not need that. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to go over here to document and here under slide size click custom slide size and you want to set it to 1280 and 720 those are the standard YouTube thumbnail sizes so if you are making thumbnails and you have those black bars around it that is why so as you can see you have more of a rectangular file here so the next thing that you want to have is you want to have a picture that you took for your thumbnail. So I have one over here. As you can see, usually when you're taking pictures you want to like kind of make it identify with what you are doing like in the video. So here I have my backpack and I grabbed a book. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to go back to format and actually click image. So once you're at image, first you want to click edit mask and just drag to where you are only going to have the image because we are actually going to crop me out of this picture. Once you have done that, you want to zoom back in a little bit just so it's easier and click instant alpha. So this is like my holy grail tool, like this is where the magic happens. So pretty much what instant alpha is, is it will get rid of colors as you like click and this can either be very easy or very very hard depending on the background of your image. Usually it's not too bad for me because I just don't have that much, well I have a lot of stuff in my background but I'm like a lot closer than the rest of my background so it's usually not too much of a problem but it does take a bit of time. It's not a, it's not a matter of like it being hard, it's just kind of tedious a little bit. After you have done like the general stuff, most of the big stuff, and it's time to move on to the little details, what you want to do, which always really helps me, is actually go back to style and click border and click line. And so this will actually line all the stuff that you have on screen and it's really easy to get rid of like all the little things that you missed that you may not have noticed because it can definitely be kind of tricky. Okay, so I got rid of some of the small stuff off of camera just because it's super tedious and it takes some time, like about the same amount of time that like the first getting rid of the big stuff takes. And I was sure that you guys wouldn't really care about that, so it's pretty much the same thing that I was already doing, but just like super detailed, so you guys didn't miss much. I'm actually saving you guys your time, so. <laughs> okay, so here we are. And once I actually crop the top of my head out, like so, it will look a lot better. Because, like I said, around the body, it's pretty easy to get, like, clean lines. It's just the hair that, like, really gets to me. But if you're a guy, this is probably not even going to be an issue for you, so. Okay, the next thing that I like to do is I like to go back to style and I always like to put a shadow, the drop shadow under the image. And I do this for my text, for any like 
clip art that I put in my thumbnails, always put the shadow because it'll make it like pop off the screen. And you can actually play with how intense it is here. I usually like to set the blur, blur, the blur to 30 or 25. I'll set it to 30 today. And I like to do the offset at 15. That's a little bit more intense than a lot of people go for, but I mean, for a YouTube thumbnail, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's perfect, so. Okay, the next thing, so here, if you just click on the background, this is the background color fill, where you can make your background any color, but we're not doing that. We're taking it to the next level, because I have, I have actually, like, been putting in images into my background, and I love the way that it looks. So we are going to go here to Google and we are just going to Google classroom because it's a high school survival guide video so you know classroom makes sense <laughs> and then we just have to find one that we like I think this is a good one I think I've seen other youtubers using this one so let's see how that one looks and sometimes the first image that you try isn't gonna be the best one yeah, see, like, this one is a little bit too small, and I don't really like how grainy it is, but let's give it a shot anyways, and just see how I look on top of that. Eh. It's not horrible, but I feel like we could find something better. I think I like that. Yeah. So another thing that I like to do is, if you go back to image, you can actually enhance your picture. And I know it looks pretty orangey. Sometimes I'll turn it down, but sometimes it'll get it like just right. So it's a matter of like playing with it and it depends on the kind of image that you have. But for the most part, that's not too bad. So we have our background image, we have our cutout. Next, we are going to do some words. So, let's say hi. I like to always have my words separately because, I mean, high school altogether is a pretty long word and I don't think that I would be able to make it big enough to show up if I just had it like that. So, usually what I'll do is I'll set it to 200 because that's a good, like, it'll show up so you can, like, play around with it. And then I will set it to white because white usually pops more. And then drop shadow like always. Let's change the font. So I have a lot of fonts because you can download free fonts from thefont.com. There are other sites that I can't really think of but I will link some down below for you guys. Alright, so I have finally decided on a font. I decided to just like turn my camera off for a little bit because since I am doing this like I would normally make my thumbnail just like off the bat, it usually takes some time to like try out different fonts and play with things and I didn't want to make this video super long. So I picked the font, we're good. <laughs> so as you can see I've taken advantage of this kind of like back blackboard area and I think this does not have a shadow. Wow. Yeah, so as you can see that makes a huge difference. Like compared to what it was before and this is set to how I like it let's see these ones are too so as you can see the letters don't really pop off the screen at least not the high school part so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to shape and then we're going to pick this square box and then we are just going to make it the same size the right <laughs> and I just like to do two boxes because I like to have them different colors just because I feel like that also makes it pop a little bit more Oops. not what I meant to do so this one first of all let's send them to the back you just right click on it and then you press send to back and it's actually behind this image so we want to send this one backwards as well. And me, because. Yes, see, and then this is 
over the top of everything. So obviously I am not going to have it this exact color. And let's see. And this one. Kinda like that. I think it another thing that I like to do is I always like to make sure that I kind of tie in the colors so my eyeshadow is very orangey and I know like most people won't even see that but like to me my eyeshadow is orangey so therefore I need to have some like pink yellow shades in my thumbnail <laughs> I swear the guys watching this video are like shaking their head I'm sorry <laughs> and then for this one I think like a yellow would look good yeah and then you can always play with the darkness of it here I think I want to make it like, yeah, I like that color. Like, it's more of a lemony color, a little bit more matted. If you wanted to take this to the next level, sometimes what I'll do is I will go and find some emojis. I actually already pulled up this, like, emoji notebook thing because I wanted to show you guys an example. I'm not gonna put clip art in because I don't think I need any, but if you guys are going to be doing clip art into your thumbnails, it's super easy to just drag it onto here and you can actually use the same instant alpha to get rid of anything that's surrounding the image that you want to use enhance the image and then drop shadow and suddenly this is like the perfect clip art like wait honestly i kind of i don't really hate how this looks also, if you guys don't like how it is rotated, you can actually change that if you go to the arrange here and here in angle, you just put in how much you want to rotate the image. See, I put in 15, you can do 45, and it will just change it up. So, if I actually put it to like 30, I think this book looks a lot better here than it did when it was at zero and just straight up because sometimes things don't really fit into your thumbnail the way that you want them to and what I love about Kino is that it's very easy to make something new out of something old. Like you can take an image and like make something different out of it. And I actually think that this is where I'm going to end it because I'm happy with this thumbnail, I like how it looks and I hope this video helps you guys out. Alright guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If this helped you out, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing. It really helps me out and I will see you in my next video.